I'm in the beautiful park and gardens of Highlands House in rural Essex, not far from London Stansted Airport. The southeast of England has some of the busiest, most congested airspace in the world. That was until the Covid pandemic came along. The skies above me today are certainly very, very quiet. In this episode of Insights for a Different World, we're looking at aviation's impact on the environment and how COVID-19 has changed the way we view sustainability in the industry. Joining me today, live from Amsterdam, is Mikael Novak, who is the Marketing Director for Embraer Commercial Aviation, responsible for Europe, Africa, the Middle East and Central Asia. Hello, Arthur. And Martin Holmes, who's the Chief Commercial Officer for Embraer Commercial Aviation. Thank you, Arthur. Guys, thank you very much for joining me today. Martin, if I can start with you, please. Embraer has been very vocal in their opinion on how sustainability will be a driving force within the aviation industry after COVID-19 has passed. But how has the pandemic changed things? You're right. We have been vocal about sustainability for a while now. It's the right thing to do for Embraer, for our customers and for a global perspective as well. The COVID-19 crisis has really provided three more drivers onto that sustainability quest. We're seeing more government influence in airline decision making due to the state support programmes that have come to bear. We're also seeing the increasing significance of companies demonstrating environmental, social and governance credentials. We've seen reduced liquidity in the market and those companies that are able to demonstrate strong ESG credentials have a competitive advantage. And also we the public are demanding more and more environmental awareness from our providers in aviation. So I think as we've had a chance to reflect during the COVID-19 crisis, we see a catalyst now for a reset. Mikhail, we're seeing governments around the world show more of an interest in the aviation industry and influence decision making. How will this help aviation in terms of sustainability in the long term? Definitely, this is the trend we are seeing here in Europe. The governments have stepped up their standards in terms of sustainability. In many cases, they link directly or indirectly the financial support packages to airlines meeting the environmental targets. So you might say that the very survival of an airline will be dependent on how well will it um, address the sustainability challenge. Governments are also introducing more and more strict regulations in terms of operations. Take London City, for example. They have a plan on limiting the noise footprint in the community around the airport by banning some of the older generation aircraft from operating at this airport. Luckily for the carriers, in many cases, they can meet those stricter and stricter requirements simply by renewing their fleet, by moving from current or old generation to the newest generations, just like the E2, the cleanest and the quietest aircraft in narrow body segment. Martin, around the world, we're seeing a growing concern for climate change, and it's becoming pretty clear that consumers and investors alike are seeking out companies with better environmentally friendly credentials. How is this changing the aviation business? We're seeing more and more investment opportunities uh, being linked to companies' environmental performance. So those companies with strong environmental credentials uh, do better in the market. In fact, statistics have shown in the past few years that those companies with strong credentials have performed better and that they forecast they're going to have more substantive growth going forward. Martin, in a post-COVID world, right-sizing will be key. How do you think airlines will rework their fleet strategy in order to become more environmentally friendly? Airlines going forward in the post-COVID world will need to drive sustainability and profitability with a lower demand level. We see that growth being driven by having right-sized aircraft that can have lower trip costs, lower emissions, they can drive their yield management more effectively. And that way you can have profitability and sustainability as compatible partners. Mikhail, we've seen recently airlines have started to retire older, less fuel efficient aircraft in favour of smaller, right sized aeroplanes. What technology specifically do they have on board that's more environmentally friendly? Well, in terms of technology, it starts with the latest technology power plant. 
but that's not enough. In case of the E2, we have also optimized every single system all across the aircraft, starting with the new shape of the wing, empennage, landing gear, etc. All of this combined allows E2 to burn up to 25% less fuel per passenger compared to the previous generation. And the fuel burn is directly one-to-one -one linked with uh, CO2 emissions. But CO2 is one thing. The very same technologies allowed us to significantly limit the noise footprint of the aircraft. We've managed to certify E2 under the so-called chapter 14. This is the chapter that is ahead of the times. It will become the requirement on many of the European airports only in the future. So you might say that the E2 is future proof. Martin, as we look to the future, there's going to be an even greater need for new technologies and innovations in order for the industry to meet its sustainability goals. For example, we're already seeing biofuels being researched, tested and developed. But what other new technologies, innovations and programs can we expect to see on the horizon being rolled out into regional aircraft? With regional aircraft, I really see the regional aviation space being at the forefront of these environmental technologies. This will be the market that will see the use of these technologies earlier on. This will be where the technologies will be more viable sooner. In the short and medium term, sustainable aviation fuels obviously are there at the forefront and we are working with partners globally on the certification of those fuels. In the long term, I see the disruptor being an electric and hybrid aircraft and we're accumulating a lot of knowledge out there on systems and structures. We have business units from Embraer X, Evertol, looking at defence, commercial and executive aviation. All that knowledge comes to bear so that in the future we can bring these environmental technologies to the regional segment. It's exciting times, isn't it? It is indeed. I really do see regional aviation being at the forefront of bringing these technologies to the market. Martin, Mikhail, thank you both for your insights today. To me, it's clear the aviation industry has made significant progress in achieving its sustainability goals, cutting carbon emissions and reducing noise levels of aircraft, largely achieved through technological advancements like those found in the Embraer E-Jet and E-2 family of aircraft. With the industry actively researching new fuels and technologies that are more viable on smaller aircraft, we may be finding ourselves flying on board electric or hybrid aircraft on short haul flights sooner than we think. But for now, it's a balancing act between growing regional aviation whilst minimizing the impact that aircraft have on the environment. And from what I've learned today, the industry is definitely heading in the right direction. Join me next time for another episode of Insights for a Different World.